and we're back with another video. In today's tribute, we'll be checking out iconic American stars who passed away today and recently. Along with that, we have special tributes to share with you later. We'll be delicately discussing some unfortunate news. Legends who somehow contributed to their respective work, but unfortunately passed away today. We extend our condolences to their families during this time of great sadness. May God welcome them with open arms. Goodbye. But first, we ask that you all show your love and support by giving this video a thumbs up. Mike Lynch, tech mogul acquitted of fraud, dies at 59. The British entrepreneur was found not guilty of fraud charges in the sale of his company to Hewlett Packard. He was celebrating his acquittal when his yacht sank off the coast of Sicily. Mike Lynch, a British software mogul who was once celebrated as a top technology leader, only to spend more than a decade defending himself against accusations that he orchestrated one of the biggest frauds in Silicon Valley history, died on Monday after his yacht sank off the coast of Sicily. He was 59. An official in the Italian city of Palermo confirmed on Thursday that Mr. Lynch's body had been recovered by divers. Twelve guests and ten crew members were on board the yacht, the Bayesian, when it went down during a violent storm. Mr. Lynch's wife, Angela Becares, was rescued, along with nine crew members and five other passengers. Seven bodies have been recovered, including one thought to be that of Mr. Lynch's daughter, Hannah Lynch. Mr. Lynch's death came two months after he was acquitted in federal court in San Francisco of criminal fraud charges, tied to the $11 billion sale of his company, Optonomy, to Hewlett Packard in 2011. The takeover, widely regarded among investors as one of the worst deals in history, led HP to accuse Mr. Lynch of deception. Prosecutors in the United States charged Mr. Lynch with more than a dozen counts of fraud and conspiracy related to the deal, with a potential sentence running to about two decades in prison. On the day in 2023 that a British judge found him liable for civil fraud in the matter, the British government, despite numerous appeals by Mr. Lynch, approved his extradition to the United States. He was confined to a townhouse in San Francisco under 24-hour surveillance on his own dime. During his house arrest, his mother, Dolores, and his brother, Richard, died. The accusation sullied the reputation of Mr. Lynch, who was known at one point as Britain's Bill Gates. Michael Richard Lynch was born on June 16, 1965, to Michael and Dolores Lynch, working-class immigrants from Ireland, and grew up outside London. He attended private school on a scholarship and graduated from Cambridge before founding Autonomy in 1996. The company helped clients analyze unstructured information to unearth hidden insights about their businesses. By 2011, Autonomy had become one of Britain's most prominent technology companies, with its home base sometimes called Silicon Fen, a name derived from its location at the southern tip of the Fenland, a marshy area in eastern England. Mr. Lynch became a celebrity in British tech circles. He was a member of the Royal Society, one of the country's top scientific associations, an advisor to David Cameron, the prime minister at the time, and a member of the BBC's board. Autonomy drew the attention of HP, which had sought to transform its fortunes by buying a high-powered software company and which eventually paid 60% over the British company's market value. But investors and analysts opposed the deal, and HP wrote down the value of the transaction by $8.8 billion. HP fired the chief executive who led the deal, and soon after, Mr. Lynch himself. Meg Whitman, the former eBay leader who took over HP, accused Mr. Lynch and his lieutenants of serious accounting improprieties at misled her company over the state of autonomy's business. But Mr. Lynch, Armed with the hundreds of millions that he collected from Autonomy's sale, hired an army of lawyers to argue that HP had been aware of the company's practices. His team also said that Mr. Lynch had largely delegated the company's day-to-day -day financial operations. Mr. Lynch's trial began in San Francisco in March. It stretched out over three months and involved reams of often dense internal documents. After two days of deliberations, a jury found Mr. Lynch and Stephen Chamberlain a former Autonomy Vice President of Finance who faced similar charges, not guilty on all counts. Mr. Chamberlain was fatally struck by a car on Saturday while out for a run, his lawyer, Gary S. Linsenberg, said Monday in an emailed statement. After the verdict, Mr. Lynch said in a statement, I am looking forward to returning to the UK and getting back to what I love most, my family and innovating in my field. He later returned to his homes in London and Suffolk. While defending himself against the HP accusations, Mr. Lynch became a venture capitalist, founding Invo Capital 
to invest in companies, including the cybersecurity provider Dartress. More recently, he had begun to focus on artificial intelligence research, including ways the technology could help those with hearing difficulties. His survivors include his wife and another daughter, Esme. The actor, singer, and TV presenter Dewey Poos Morris has died, aged 76. He is best known for playing a lead role in the 1978 comedy Grand Slam about a rugby fan who goes in search of an old girlfriend while on a trip to see Wales play France at the former Five Nations tournament. He was the Children's Poet Laureate for Wales in 2010-11 and also starred in numerous S4C productions. Born in Trebov, near Swansea, he was a teacher before turning to acting and singing, becoming a member of several pop groups. Dewey Gray Morris took on the name Dewey Paws to distinguish himself from other Dewey's in his class. After school, he went to Cinco College in Cardiff to train as a teacher, and then taught for some years in Splot, Cardiff. But he soon discovered teaching was not for him. Moving into the world of entertainment after being asked to write a pantomime for a Welsh theatre company. From there, more acting roles fold he played Wayne Harris from Pobolee Coombe's debut in 1974 until 1987. He also took roles in Round Around, Taff Acre, and many other plays, films, and soaps in both English and Wales, but it was his part as Oscar winner who Griffith's womanizing son, Blind Lloyd Evans, in 1978 BBC Wales comedy Grand Slam that became his best-known role. In a 2018 interview, he recalled the film's enduring popularity. Lots of people, even young people, know every line in it more than I did, he said. When I was offered the part, John, Heffin, co-writer, came up to me one day and said, how do you fancy being in a rugby film? He said he did not realize it was going to be a cult film or that he would be acting with Hugh Griffith. Frightening, Frightening, and Awesome He was also known as part of 1970s punk group Tabat Pius and later rock band Edward H. Defus. He won the song contest Can I Jim Root in 1971 with Nui N. I. Nen, and is also credited with composing Luku Lloyd. He was awarded Best Regional Presenter in 2003 for his series by Pose, Pose's World, by the Royal Television Society. In 2010, he was nominated as Children's Poet in Wales. He wrote over a dozen books and was a guest presenter for the Children's Literature Festival. In Cardiff in 2018, he received an honorary degree from Swansea University. Mr. Morris is survived by his wife, Ryanan, with whom he lived in Nefine Gwynedd. 2016, he said a load. Longtime TV talk show host Phil Donahue died on Sunday night following a long illness, his family said. He was 88. Donahue died at his home surrounded by his family, including his wife of 44 years, actor Marlo Thomas, his sister, his children, his grandchildren, and his beloved golden retriever, Charlie, his family said in a statement to TODNO further details about his cause of death were released. The third hour of Toe Days, Craig Nelvin and Shinel Jones announced the news of Donahue's death on Monday morning. You know, we overuse sometimes the word trailblazer, but he certainly was, indeed, Shinel said. The journalist pioneered the modern format of issue-based daytime talk shows featuring audience participation. His show would become one of the most influential programs of its time, with Donahue winning nine daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Donahue, was born in 1935 in Cleveland, and began his journalism career working in radio in the 1950s. Donahue married his first wife, Margaret Mary Cooney, in 1958, and they had five children. The pair divorced in 1975. He began hosting TV's The Phil Donahue Show in 1967 in Ohio with a live studio audience. The show was syndicated a few years later and would move to Chicago before making its home in New York City in 1985. The final episode of the show, which had been renamed Donahue, aired in 1996, after a 29-year run. Donahue met Thomas while filming an episode of the show in 1977, and the pair later said in interviews it was love at first sight. The couple married in 1980. In addition to hosting his eponymous show, Donahue regularly appeared on Tobia from 1979 to 1988. Thomas, an Emmy-winning actor and National Outreach Director for Street Jude Children's Research Hospital, has also made appearances on Tobia. Day. In 2022, she gave an update on her husband on the third hour of Tobe Day to Craig, Shinel, Al Roker, and Dylan Dreyer. He loves to watch talk shows and scream at the set. That's not the question. Thomas said, 
sending the hosts in Donahue returned to TV briefly in 2002, when he began hosting a show called Donahue on MSNBC, which was canceled several months later. President Joe Biden awarded Donahue and 18 others the Presidential Medal of Freedom in May. The medal is the country's highest civilian honor and is presented to individuals who have made exemplary contributions to the prosperity, values, or security of the United States, world peace, or other significant societal, public, or private endeavors, according to the White House. Don Hughes' family requested that donations be made to Street Jude Children's Research Hospital or the Phil Donahue slash Notre Dame Scholarship Fund in lieu of flowers, according to their statement laughter. Ostai. John Apria, the Godfather Part II actor, dead at 83, another world star John Apria died in Los Angeles due to natural causes John Apria, known for portraying a young Salvatore Sal Tessio in The Godfather Part II of I, died earlier this month. He was 83. Apria died of natural causes on Monday, August 5 in Los Angeles surrounded by his loved ones, his manager Will Levine confirmed to Fox News Digital. I am very saddened by the death of Mr. Apria, Levine told Fox News Digital. He was an incredibly talented actor and loved by his friends. One of the classiest guys I Napria was born to Italian immigrants in Inglewood, New Jersey in 1941 and landed his first break in the industry in a 1968 Steve McQueen classic San Francisco cop drama, Bullet. He then went on to play young Tessio in The Godfather Part II. When cast for the role, Apria reportedly phoned A.B. Vigoda, who played the older version of the role in Part I, to ask for character insight. Vigoda told Apria, I don't know what I did. Just have a good time, kid. Apria starred in a number of crime sagas in addition to soap opera dramas. He worked for decades as Alexander Nikos and Lucas Castigliano on the long-running daytime hit, Another World. In addition to his work as a tough guy, Apria played John Stamos' father on the family sitcom Full House. Years later, he reprised his role when the series was picked up for a Netflix reboot for Fuller House. Apria is survived by his wife and partner of 25 years, Betsy Gracie, daughter Nicole from a previous marriage, and stepchildren Marika Parker and Valentino Grassi.U. Morris Williams, the doo-wop legend behind Stay, has died aged 86. The news was confirmed by former Zodiac's member Ron Henderson Jr. on social media, who asked that people respect the privacy of his wife and said, we've lost another icon. No cause of death has yet been reported. Williams performed the hit track Stay Track with the Zodiacs in 1960. It went on to be the shortest number one in Billboard Hot 100 history and was covered extensively by the likes of The Hollies, Jackson Brown, The Four Seasons, and Cyndi Lauper. Decades later, the song featured in Dirty Dancing and became a hit with a different generation. Williams wrote the track when he was 15 years old. Inspired by his high school swee, later told classic bands it only took him half an hour to write. It took me about 30 minutes to write Stay, then I threw it away, he said. We're looking for songs to record as Morris Williams and the Zodiacs. I was over at my girlfriend's house playing the tape of songs I had written when her little sister said, please do the song with the high voice in it. I knew she meant stay. She was about 12 years old, and I said to myself, she's the age of record buying, and the rest is history. I thank God for her. The college girl singer grew up in Lancaster, South Carolina. He had a musical upbringing and would sing in church and take piano lessons from his sister. Influenced by groups like the Orioles, he formed a gospel group named the Junior Harmonizers with Earl Ganey, a friend from Bear Street High School. At 16, he and the additional members of the group William Massey, Willie Jones, and Norman Wade, went to Nashville for an audition and secured a contract with Accela Records and were renamed the Gladiolas. Lil Darlin was their first hit and went on the feature in American Graffiti. In 1960, another name change came after the group saw Ford Zodiac in a showroom. They signed with Harold Records and Williams dug up the Stay Demo. After record exec Al Stilvert suggested he change the line Another Smoked to Another Dance, they soon had a radio hit on their hands. To date, the song has sold 32 million copies around the world. Morris was a long-standing member of New Emmanuel United Church of Christ, where he served on the trustee board and sang on choir. It was noted on his obituary. French film legend Alain Delon has died at the age of 88. The actor was a star of the golden era of French cinema, 
known for his tough guy persona on screen and hits, including The Samurai and Borsalino. Delon had been in poor health in recent years and had become a virtual recluse. More recently, the breakdown of his family had made headlines in France. Bridget Bardot led tributes in France, saying Delon's death left a huge void that nothing and no one will be able to once describe as the most beautiful man in movies. Delon starred in hits from the 1960s, including The Leopard and Rocco and his brothers. He stole the hearts of fans whatever role he was playing, from a murderer to a charismatic comet. From the 1990s, his film appearances grew rare, but he remained a fixture in the celebrity columns. In total, he made almost 90 films during the course of his career. French President Emmanuel Macron was among those paying tribute to Delon on Sunday, saying the actor played legendary roles and made the world dream. In a statement on X, formerly Twitter, he added, Melancholy, popular, secretive, he was more than a star. He was a French a statement from his family said. Alain Fabian, Anouchka, Anthony, as well as his dog, Lubo, are deeply saddened to announce the passing of their father. He passed away peacefully in his home in Douchy, surrounded by his three children and his family. The Parisian newspaper called Delon a legend of the cinema, while Liberation described him as a leading figure of cinema, symbol of shadowy masculinity, the actor with crazy charisma. In a statement to AFP news agency, Bridget Bardot said Delon represented the best of France's prestige cinema, an ambassador of elegance, talent, beauty. I lose a friend and alter ego, partner. Delon's last major public appearance was to receive an honorary Palm d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival in May 2019. At the event, he made an emotional speech in which he appeared to bid farewell to cinema. It's a bit of a posthumous tribute, but from my lifetime, he said, I'm going to leave, but I won't leave without thanking you. Former president of the Cannes Festival, Dils Jacob, described Delon as a lion, an actor with a steely gaze, while Alberta Barbara, director of the Venice Film Festival, said he was an icon who had climbed to the Olympus off for decades. The French public have followed the ins and outs of Delon's prolific career and equally prolific love life, via Paris Match and other magazines. His colorful personal life regularly made the front pages as he charmed and seduced his way around Europe at the height of his fame. But he also faced criticism. Some disapproved of his support for Jean-Marie Le Pen, leader of the far-right National Front, who championed the death penalty and opposed same-sex marriage. His relationships with women also caused controversy and led to claims of Miss More recently. The breakdown of his family had been making headlines in France. The actor had three children, two sons and a daughter, by two different women, and a third son unacknowledged and now dead. In recent years, his surviving children have been laying bare their mutual grievances before the media in a series of insults, accusations, lawsuits, and secret recordings. They included disagreements over his medical treatment following his stroke in 2019. Another row involved Hiromi Roland, Delon's former housekeeper. Delon's children ejected her last year, but she subsequently filed a suit against them for endangering Delon's life by refusing him in April this year. A judge placed Delon under reinforced curatorship meaning he no longer had full freedom to manage his assets. Delon also made headlines in February of this year when French police seized 72 firearms and 3,000 rounds of ammunition from his home. Prosecutors said he did not have a gun license. A shooting range was also found at his Douchy Montcorvin mansion. BBC News has contacted Delon's representatives, Medicines Ogeny, the Immortals Monument, Phil. WWE star Roman Reigns' uncle, WWE Hall of Famer Afa Hanoi, has died. He was 81. The retired wrestler's daughter, Val Hanoi, shared the news via X on Friday, writing, Today, all of our lives are irreparably changed. I love you so much, Dad. More than any words could ever express. Your strength was absolutely superhuman. You fought all the way to the end, and the end was peaceful. That's all I could have hoped for. Val explained that she had just received the phone call from her mother, Lin Anoa'i, that her beloved father, the center of her universe, had passed away. She marveled that she got to spend the vast majority of her life right there by his side. Through the best of times and the hardest of times, going on to thank him for every priceless life lesson he taught her and for being someone who cared always. Though devastated, Val is admittedly not shocked 
as Afa had faced numerous health issues in recent months. I've been preparing to say goodbye to my dad since January when he had those two heart attacks. I was prepared to say goodbye to him in March when he fell and broke his back in two places and had to have major surgery. I was prepared to say goodbye to my dad when he had his heart valve replacement surgery. She confessed that I was prepared to say goodbye to him when he was having the second back surgery. I was prepared to say goodbye to my dad when we had to tell him the news of Uncle Sticka's passing. Hall of Famer Sika Anoa, Afa's brother and partner in the legendary Wild Simone's tag team, as well as Rain's father, died in June at the age of 79. For the last month, Love been preparing to say goodbye to my dad as his health declined, as he was put on hospice care, as he grew weaker and more fragile. Vail penned, adding that she has realized that she'll never have to say goodbye, because a very strong part of him will always be part of her. This is just the end of your lifetime on Earth, she shared, speaking directly to her father. I will always love you. You will be remembered, honored, missed, and respected forever. Vail called Afa the strongest man she's ever known. The three count comes for us all, eventually, but you fought it all the way to the end. You kicked out more times than anyone else ever has. You are forever our undisputed champion, she wrote, reiterating her love for him and thanking him for all the memories he shared over the last few days.